So if you're familiar with my channel, then you've probably already noticed that when I talk about cities, I usually talk about them from the perspective of metro areas. The reason for this being that when you're talking about macro level infrastructure, things like major highways, inner city and regional transit and such, one has to look beyond the imaginary city limits lines. This also applies to population growth trends. Oftentimes when you hear in the media that X city is losing people or gaining people, they're taking the more narrow perspective that only applies to the city limits. Looking at the metro population gives you a more accurate idea of the health of the region as a whole. As such, it is quite uncommon to see an American metro area losing population. Even the notorious Detroit metro held off on losing any of its population until the 1980 census, where it finally started to decline, signaling a major alarm for the area. Well, between 2020 and 2022, we had a major event occur. Several major U.S. metros are estimated to have lost population during this time. On this video, we're going to take a look at the 10 major U.S. metros that posted a population loss. This will be ordered by percentage of population loss, and to qualify, the metro must have had at least 1 million residents at the 2020 census. So that makes the cutoff point Fresno, California, which just barely cracked that mark in 2020. We'll start off with a dishonorable mention to give you some context, which would be number 11, and that is Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. As of 2020, Pittsburgh had 2,349,172 people and is estimated to have lost 21,758 people as of 2022, dropping it to 2.370 million. Good for a percentage loss of 0.92%. All right, now on to the official list. At number 10 on the list is a Midwestern city, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, officially named the Milwaukee-Waukesha metropolitan area. Milwaukee had a 2020 population of 1.559 million, and in 2022 is estimated to be down to 1.574 million, a loss of 0.95% and a numerical loss of 14,939. Now, the city of Milwaukee itself has been in population decline since the mid-20th century. However, the metro was able to post slow, slight growth up until now. Milwaukee itself suffered from many of the same issues as its other Rust Belt brethren, with the decline in U.S. manufacturing and the racial and socioeconomic issues of the mid-20th century. As such, it has been an economically stagnant area for several decades. Now the issues appear to be spreading to its suburbs. Several suburban towns around Milwaukee are now economically stagnant as well and posting little to no growth. Crime and the perception of high crime has increased, and the cold weather doesn't help as Americans overall are leaving colder northern cities for warmer Sunbelt metros. I see no reason to believe Milwaukee will turn things around by the 2030 census, but we shall see. I'll be visiting the area soon myself to get a closer, first-hand look. Number 9 on the list should be a no surprise when it comes to losing population, but perhaps somewhat of a surprise that it's not even higher on the list, and that is a much beleaguered Detroit metro. Detroit had 4.392 million people in 2020 and lost 46,280 people or 1.05% of its metro population as of 2022. Now I'm sure you've all heard the dire condition of the Detroit area. The city itself is somewhat legendary for its incredible decline from a peak of 1.8 million in 1950 to a little over 600,000 in 2020. What many don't mention is that even in the face of Detroit's original descent from 1950, its surrounding metro area continued to grow up until 1980. Since then, there has been some occasional fluctuation until where we are today with the population being about the same as 1980. This means that even the surrounding, more wealthy suburbs of Detroit have pretty much been stuck in the same spot for over 40 years. The reason why the Detroit metro is losing people? Lack of jobs, economic opportunity, high crime, bad weather, you name it, Detroit experiences it. In fact, the decline in Detroit is now occurring on every level. The city itself lost population, the metro lost, and even the state of Michigan as a whole lost population, even so far as losing a congressional seat in the U.S. House of Representatives. There doesn't seem to be much hope in sight as Michigan isn't high on many people's list of places to move to these days. At number eight on the list, we have Cleveland, Ohio. In 2020, Cleveland had a population of 2.088 million and posted a loss of 25,119, dropping it to 2.063 million, a loss of 1.2%. Boy, the Midwest is dominating the list so far. Cleveland, once Ohio's largest metro area, is now last among its big three. Cleveland is similar to Detroit in that the metro did post some growth after 1950, but stopped in 1980 and became stagnant. Here, 40 years later, the metro population is slightly less than in the 1980s. Ohio as a whole lost population during this period, but the Cleveland area saw the greatest of that loss. 
Overall, Ohio is part of a greater trend of people leaving the Rust Belt in the Midwest for the South and the West. Lack of economic opportunity and jobs is a big factor for the loss in Cleveland. I don't see Cleveland's fortunes changing as this greater trend isn't slowing down anytime soon. The Columbus metro area was able to post an overall increase due to the suburban population growth, the lone exception in the state of Ohio. And at number seven is the Windy City of Chicago, America's third largest metro area for now. In 2020, the Chicago area had a population of 9.618 million and lost 176,545 people as of 2022, a percentage loss of 1.84%. The city of Chicago itself has been in free fall since 1950, like many other Rust Belt cities, losing well over 1 million people since 1950. However, up until now, its suburbs and overall metro area was able to still post growth. Today, that is no longer the case and the whole Chicago region as a whole is experiencing a population decline. Many are predicting that the booming Texas metros of Dallas and Houston will eventually supplant Chicago and drop it to fifth in the U.S. ABC News Chicago says that many blue-collar and working-class citizens are leaving the area due to the lack of jobs. States like Florida and Texas are top destinations, with many other black residents heading to Georgia. So overall, there is no money to be made in Chicago, and when the jobs go, so does the population. What can Chicago do? Not much, most likely. This also is part of the greater trend of Americans leaving this part of the country for the lower cost of living and better job market of the South. I see Chicago's decline continuing for the foreseeable future. Number six on the list is the first and actually the only major Southern Metro to lose population, and that is New Orleans, Louisiana. In 2020, New Orleans had 1.271 million people and lost 25,669 people as of 2022, a loss of 2.02% of the Metro population. The story of the New Orleans metro population can be tied to Hurricane Katrina. Up until that event, the metro was able to post consistent growth, though that slowed down a bit in the 1990s. In the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, the New Orleans metro area took a huge hit, losing around 150,000 people, or 11% of its total population. However, it was able to rebound somewhat by the 2020 census. What's hurting New Orleans? New Orleans has a reputation for poverty, crime, and poor economic opportunities. While the area is famous for tourism and still draws a lot of visitors, not many are finding a reason to call the area home. New Orleans is particularly alarming because unlike the aforementioned Midwestern cities, New Orleans is in the booming Sun Belt region of the United States. But it is being passed up for metros like Houston, Dallas, Atlanta, Nashville, and Charlotte. I visited New Orleans in late 2021. And while the tourist hotspots look pretty nice, the rest of the city itself look quite undesirable. Parts of the Lower Ninth Ward look like they were never cleaned up after Katrina. Almost hard to believe that this was a major American metro. Number five is an interesting one, Honolulu, Hawaii. In 2020, the Honolulu metro area sat at 1.016 million and took a loss of 20,870 people, or 2.05% of its metro population, which dropped it to under the 1 million mark to 995,000. 638 people. An interesting note about Honolulu is that up until now, its metro has never posted a loss of population. The big reason for the loss here is said to be the higher unemployment relative to the mainland, a rising and already high cost of living, a high inflation. So overall, it's just easier and cheaper to find a comfortable living on the mainland. Can Honolulu turn things around? Well, it probably will depend on the overall economy of the country. Hawaii relies heavily on tourism and the service industry jobs associated with it. But during the pandemic, the islands were closed for business. With things opening back up, there may be some good news on the horizon, but we shall see. Number four is another very large metro, America's second largest, in fact, and that is Los Angeles, California. Los Angeles had 13.2 million people at the 2020 census and is estimated to have lost a whopping 328,676 people or 2.49% of its metro as of 2022. The surprising thing about Los Angeles losing people is that it covers a massive land area. The Los Angeles metro is larger than several countries, yet still with all that land, the region posted a loss. The core county, Los Angeles County, is said to have lost 90,000 residents alone in 2022, and even the neighboring suburban Orange County saw a loss. Most of the loss in the LA area is due to out-of-state migration with many leaving California altogether for states such as Arizona, Texas, and Florida. Local officials say factors such as work from home, retiring people, and the pandemic were factors as it's simply cheaper to live elsewhere. Sky-high housing costs and the overall cost of living are helping fuel the exodus from California as a whole, as it is also one of the few states that took an overall hit in population. It's not getting any cheaper to live in Los Angeles, so I'm not too optimistic about this trend reversing anytime soon. 
things might be getting worse before they get better. Number three is America's largest metro by far, and that is the New York, New Jersey metro area. New York had 20.140 million people at the 2020 census and posted the largest absolute loss of all metros with 522,601 people fleeing the area as of 2022, a percentage loss of 2.59%. New York is the largest metro area in the entire world in terms of the land area it covers at a whopping 4,669 square miles. Now this one doesn't surprise me at all. When I was living in Charlotte, North Carolina, I can't count how many transplants I encountered who were from New York or New Jersey. In fact, the locals up in North Carolina's Triangle area had come up with a nickname for the suburban town of Cary due to all the New Yorkers in the area. The biggest reason for people fleeing America's largest metro? Cost of living, and to a lesser degree, the weather. Whenever I encounter someone from these areas, they always praise how affordable the housing is in the south and the warmer weather. At first, it baffled me. Why would people want to leave an area with so much to do, with so much going on, for a place like Charlotte or Raleigh? Well, when I traveled to the area last fall and winter, I fully understood. In New York and New Jersey, you are taxed, told, and fined for everything. Everything is more expensive. And I mean everything. Food, gas, housing, you name it. There's a fine for this, there's a toll for that. It wouldn't surprise me if New York eventually figured out a way to tax you for consuming too much oxygen. Then as far as the weather goes, the winters are just too harsh compared to the more popular parts of the country. You see, New York is a place where you go to make your money. Once you've made it, you take your nest egg and you go down south or southwest. Work from home likely also played a role in New York's decline as there is little incentive to stay there if you can make that same money but live in cheaper metros. I don't see a reversal of this one anytime soon as even today New York is struggling to get people back into office and pondering even more ways to tax residents. And it's not getting any warmer anytime soon. Number two is another California metro, and that is San Jose, the home of the famous Silicon Valley. San Jose had a population of 2 million at the 2020 census and took an estimated loss of 61,944 people as of 2022, a percentage loss of 3.1%. San Jose, like Los Angeles, is being hit by its high cost of living. Other factors include crime, homelessness, and urban blight. With working from home as an option, many tech employees have chosen to make other states their home over California. San Jose is the largest city in the Bay Area by population, and it now joins other nearby cities, Oakland and San Francisco, in the greater population exodus from the region. Considering the scenery and excellent weather in California, you know it's bad when people are willing to forego all of that and just leave the area instead. At number one on the list, still in California, is second largest metro, none other than San Francisco, Oakland, aka the Bay Area. In 2020, San Francisco had 4.749 million, and took a hit of 169,409 people as of 2022, the largest percentage loss in the country at 3.57%. Now, this is the third California metro on the list to complete the trend of the exodus from the state. San Francisco suffers from similar issues that plague other California metros, high cost of living, crime, homelessness, and urban blight. Remote work was the final nail in the coffin as it removed one of the remaining incentives for many high-income workers to remain in the area. An interesting note about the Bay Area is that not all of its losses to other states. A good amount of those leaving have chosen nearby areas just outside the Bay Area. Sacramento's metro area actually gained population between 2020 and 2022, snatching up some Bay Area residents looking to escape its issues. Local officials believe that the primary reason for the population loss is the high cost of housing. As such, they believe that building more housing is the key to reducing the cost of living and enticing people to move back into the area. Abby Ray's of the Bay Area Council said that really all boils down to building more housing and making it easier to build more housing rather than the system we have now where getting a building permit. There are a lot of issues there with permitting. Is she right? Can California get enough housing built to reduce the cost of living and stop the trend of its population loss? We'll find out in the coming years. And there you have it guys, the biggest losers of population across US metro areas. Why does any of this matter? The biggest reason is economic. When these metro areas lose population, they're also losing tax revenue as a result. Already existing infrastructure in these metros has to be maintained, and cities are faced with tough choices of either raising taxes to increase revenue, or simply delaying infrastructure maintenance or reducing services to compensate. While it was easy to write off the decline in the late 20th century, of course cities like Detroit, St. Louis, Baltimore, and such, to issues such as white flight, crime, and loss of jobs, since the surrounding suburbs were healthily growing, Entire metro areas in decline point to a more dire, serious circumstance in these areas. If people flee your core city but still live in the suburbs, 
then there's something still desirable about that core city that makes them want to be near it at least. But when they abandon the whole region, well, it's time to take a long, hard look at what you're doing wrong. Overall, other than the outliers of Honolulu and New Orleans, the overall trend appears to be an exodus from the Northeast, California, and the Midwest in favor of the South and the Southwest. With factors like cost of living plaguing New York and California, weather and the lack of economic opportunity plagues the Midwest. Which, if any, of these areas do you guys think can see a rebound in the next few years or by the 2030 census? Which ones do you think will continue to decline further? Or have we already hit rock bottom? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one coming soon to a town near you.